we introduced Sustainable Mines Transparency Reports at Green Build. We focused on introducing the deliverable, which is the transparency report. And we were very excited to have been working with TOTO uh, and NSF to bring this, uh, we believe, a real innovation to market. Uh, the backstory is, and very quickly, uh, TOTO has been a Sustainable Minds customer for a number of years and has integrated using Sustainable Minds software in their product development process to help them evaluate design decisions in early stage product development to determine whether those decisions are actually going to make meaningful improvements in the design of their products so they actually are bringing uh, greener products to market. When LEED introduced, when USGBC introduced LEED V4 and unveiled uh, the product transparency credits, uh, Bill Strang, the president of North American Operations at TOTO, came back and said, we're going to need CPDs. And so we dug into uh, what is that going to mean for TOTO and other manufacturers like TOTO to get ready for LEED V4 uh, and be able to be transparent to help those building owners and architects and contractors who want to actually build credibly greener buildings and get the credits, how was TOTO going to be able to get ready, uh, just like every other manufacturer uh, in the industry? How were people going to get ready? And so we produced, we developed the transparency reports based on this uh, demand that we saw coming in the marketplace and realizing that it wasn't going to be enough simply to report uh, LCA results uh, and hope that uh, the people making purchase decisions would be able to understand and use those uh, results to make decisions. We also realized that uh, you know, manufacturers have the uh, practical responsibility to uh, produce and manage their product literature. And so, uh, you know, the handwriting was kind of on the wall, which was, look, if environmental performance is simply the latest criteria in product development, which is what we believe here at Sustainable Minds, then all of the information that someone's going to need to make a purchase decision, functional performance as well as environmental performance, should be all in the same piece of product literature. Uh, all in the same brochure, we like to say. So that was kind of the insight and the driver to create transparency reports, and that's what we brought to market uh, in November at Greenville. When we introduced the reports, we said that we were working on, and I'm using air quotes, you can't see me, um, but a universal PCR. And uh, that raised a few eyebrows. Uh, but back here at Sustainable Minds, the last few months, we've been working on uh, what that universal PCR, what is it really and what does it mean and how will it be implemented? And that's uh, what we're excited to show you and tell you about today. A little bit of background for those of you who, who don't know Sustainable Minds. Um, we started the company about five years ago, we were the first to bring uh, easy to use lifecycle assessment software to the product development marketplace, uh, deploying that software in the cloud. And since then, we've had adoption not only in uh, manufacturing, but we've seen significant adoption in education and in all types of education. We're, we're particularly proud of this, that we have uh, educators and students around the world uh, in business, MBA programs, every kind of engineering, chemical, civil, environmental, mechanical, industrial design, and now architecture using sustainable minds. And we see that that's a, a really um, important reflection of what's happening in industry that pretty much everyone involved in making decisions about products needs to be able to make those decisions from a life cycle perspective. And so integrating that way of thinking and working into each of the disciplines means that 
students graduating and moving into industry are bringing those knowledge and skills uh, with them to help improve uh, products from the get-go. One of our fundamental uh, premises is that uh, there really is no such thing as a green product. Uh, so we always use the term green er. Uh, green is a relative value and it only can be determined uh, by comparing something to something else. And so our software is actually, we call it eco-concept modeling software with real-time LCA results. Uh, what it does is allow product teams and designers to build models, whether it's a very simple model, looking at a handful or a single material, or looking at inputs across the life cycle of the product and determining where uh, the impacts are happening in which stage of the life cycle, and then what strategies can be deployed and implemented to create meaningful improvements. The way that we have made life cycle assessment simpler and understandable to non-LTA experts is through our single figure score methodology that uh, is based on science from trusted sources. We always use Tracy. Uh, we've used normalization and weighting from NIST um, to represent all of the impact categories in that single figure score. We pull out the global warming score and turn that into carbon equivalence so that we deliver two values, a relative value, which is the impact factor that represents the 10 impact categories, and the carbon equivalent, which is an absolute value. And all the data that we use is from, again, trusted sources like EcoInvent and NREL. Um, and so all of that goes into our methodology uh, to create uh, sustainable line single figure scores. And I'm going to show you as we do a quick demo of a transparency report. We have a fairly substantial um, section that we invite you to visit explaining the uh, calculation methods and then ultimately what the results mean. So with that background, um, and knowing that we've been working to help manufacturers design greener products for quite some time, uh, as the market has matured and manufacturers and consumers have become increasingly aware of the value of making greener products, now the demand to be able to market credibly greener products is here. And so that represents it finally the opportunity for us to roll out our vision of how manufacturers can uh, credibly design and market greener products uh, that we've had for quite some time uh, and we're waiting for uh, really the market to arrive. And it has. Uh, we've seen uh, all kinds of organizations from industry consortia to uh, trade associations to uh, program operators and testing and certification bodies, government agencies, all turning to life cycle assessment, which is uh, the globally recognized scientific method for measuring the relative greenness of products and systems. Everyone looking to use LCA uh, to drive uh, the new standards and certifications. But as we all know, uh, LCA, while very powerful, certainly presents uh, significant systemic challenges. Um, time, cost, you know, shortage of knowledge, shortage of useful data, shortage of standardized data, uh, reliable distribution, uh, the fact that even when manufacturers have invested in LCAs, uh, they haven't been very good at leveraging that investment, often not realizing uh, the value that they've created uh, in a meaningful way. And finally, uh, there really is no centralized or standardized distribution for the metrics guidelines and templates uh, that these various consortia 
uh, eco labels industry associations are are developing. And so today we really live in kind of a, a distributed ad hoc world uh, that really is um, now challenged with um, getting getting itself organized. And so we do see a lot of really great progress happening uh, in many different sectors. Uh, and I'm sure for those manufacturers who are on the call today, uh, that ability to get organized simply can't happen soon enough. When you look at uh, the sustainable value chain, you know, everyone involved uh, is looking to the manufacturer sitting in the supply chain behind them saying, look, you got to tell us what's in your products because I'm accountable to my customer. Um, and what that means ultimately is that this demand for transparency requires that every manufacturer in the value chain must be able to design and market with credibility. And ultimately, designing truly greener products requires access to a comprehensive source of current and credible life cycle data. So moving forward, uh, Sustainable Minds uh, is helping manufacturers design and market greener products. Really what it comes down to is it's all about making better decisions. Our software has always been about helping make better design decisions. Our transparency reports are helping manufacturers make better marketing decisions so that their customers can ultimately make better purchase decisions. And the only way that uh, the demand for greener products is going to drive the creation of greener products is to allow people to vote ultimately with their pocketbook. And so our program um, is a marketing program for manufacturers, but really it's a lead generation program uh, that not only allows them to market and tell their stories, but will ultimately connect uh, buyers and sellers um, so that we can engage and reward those manufacturers who are, who are getting out there and, and being transparent and doing the right thing. This is a kind of a high-level overview of the way we look at the products and the services that we're offering. Uh, on the left, you can see a few screenshots from our uh, EcoConcept and LCA software. Um, comparison screen. Uh, this is a view of our data selector. We're also introducing another transparency product right now, which we'll do other webcasts on you can learn about on our website. But we're introducing our transparency data sheets, which will allow product manufacturers focused on materials, components, the things that go into making uh, finished uh, end user products uh, will allow those manufacturers to market to designers and specifiers early on in the process as manufacturers are looking for uh, new greener products. This gives you a quick overview of uh, how the transparency data sheet will work. But again, that's a story for another day. Uh, but this is really the big picture. Uh, later this year, we'll be rolling out our Greener Manufacturer Showroom, where manufacturers across the value chain will be able to uh, present their greener product stories, either through transparency data sheets or transparency reports, and be able to drive traffic to their website, back to these reports, and ultimately, uh, because these reports live in the cloud and they're database driven, all of the data can be streamed and used in other applications and other locations um, as we look out towards the horizon to get to uh, use cases like whole building modeling um, and no longer encoding the manufacturer's data in PDFs. Digging into the transparency report program, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, impetus that got us uh, going on developing the transparency report program was the advent of, of Lead V4. And 
you know, it begs the question, will building product manufacturers be able to be ready in time? We are a user-centered user uh, design organization and have been working with literally hundreds of uh, stakeholders in the past year and a half on this process of bringing the transparency report program to market. And what we've definitely observed and heard uh, is uh, a certain reticence um, to get ready to specify or certify to lead before given the um, skepticism of whether building product manufacturers will be ready. So that's kind of the big question. Um, and when you do the math, every month I have to update this slide uh, as we count down to June 2015 when lead B4 goes into effect. And really, uh, you can't uh, deny that uh, when you look at the way PCRs and LCAs and EPDs have traditionally been delivered, uh, it's going to be difficult to uh, meet the demand for transparency at the scale that's going to be required and at the rate uh, that it's going to be required. So this observation really was uh, it's a key driver in realizing, you know, there really do need to be alternatives. And what does that mean? There's a lot of attributes that these alternatives needed to embody. Um, and at the get-go, uh, it had to start out with uh, making it easy to get started. What we've done is effectively taken our brand promise from our software, our first product, make it easy, make it understandable, um, make it cost effective, and we've applied it now to uh, our other uh, group of products. Um, when we really dug in, we understood that uh, today's PCR and EPD process uh, wasn't designed um, with uh, the view towards today's transparency. Uh, you know, it certainly is a, a highly robust and uh, comprehensive program. Um, and with that, uh, again, really digging into it, uh, what we determined was there can be new ways of doing things using the existing methodologies, tools, frameworks, uh, but re-engineering the process. Um, and what we did was we kind of identified where there were uh, time and cost hurdles that existed today and where those hurdles could be rethought to improve cost and speed to market uh, and ultimately uh, to create better deliverables that would help folks make more understandable uh, and certainly uh, equally credible purchase decisions. And so uh, you know, the bottom line is we are keeping the science, keeping the LCA, uh, but re-engineering the process. So the Transparency Report Program uh, has three components to it. Uh, it starts out providing, by providing options to get started with transparency. Uh, in a way, we've reverse engineered the PCR process, developing a standardized framework that uh, now will provide for cost-effective ways to create, create product group definitions up front. Uh, the results of the LCAs from that process get used then to deliver transparency reports that have all the same content requirements of an EPD but delivers it in a way that, uh, again, makes it understandable and accessible to non-technical purchasers. And we've added more. And we're going to get into the more. And finally, uh, the last deliverable, uh, in addition to the report, is to take the data from the LCA, put it into Sustainable Mind software, and deliver it back to the manufacturer's product team 
to help them understand where in the life cycle the impacts are occurring, uh, strategies that they can investigate to uh, see how to improve the environmental performance of their products, and hopefully uh, move the needle to create incredibly greener products. So this is how we think of the process. It's all about making greener product decisions, uh, marketing and designing greener uh, should be a continuous improvement loop. And it actually doesn't matter where the manufacturer starts, whether they start designing greener, like Toto did, as I mentioned before, or whether the manufacturer shows up and needs to market greener because now they uh, want to get into uh, being able to respond to the demand for product transparency. And so this is the loop that we're going to describe uh, moving forward, starting out with you know, who needs product transparency, what are those use cases, then how do uh, people who need transparency get started developing the product group definition, um, then they move into developing uh, their LCA using the Sustainable Minds Transparency Report framework. They develop their LCAs, they use them to market their product, the data gets delivered back in the software, hopefully they'll make a greener product, and when it time, comes time to report again, they'll update their LCA, update their report, and the cycle continues. So I want to make sure that uh, people on this call um, understand that uh, we in no way, shape, or form uh, want to uh, diminish the value of PCRs and EPDs. All we've done is created an alternative pathway. Um, and that's what we're trying to demonstrate here, that uh, a manufacturer or a group of manufacturers uh, have the need to report transparently for uh, lead or green globe credits, but there are no PCRs, so they can get started creating a product with definition, or they can get started creating a PCR. Or a manufacturer may have products uh, in a category uh, where there's a single PCR but haven't yet uh, been, uh, there haven't yet been more PCRs created that will address the category that that manufacturer's products in. So again, uh, they can start to create a product with definition or they can create a PCR. The manufacturer may create products that are made from materials and components that have EPDs, um, but no PCR yet has been created to cover the product, the products that they make. So again, they can start by creating a product with definition, or they can create a PCR. Or a PCR might exist, but the manufacturer has already done LCAs that don't align with that PCR. Um, or there might be already a PCR, uh, but the manufacturer wants a transparency report simply because of uh, how the transparency report delivers information to prospects and ultimately uh, lives out there in the marketplace. Um, I'd like to introduce our uh, premier partner, NSF International, their sustainability division, who has started working with us uh, last summer, when we approached them and said, um, you're working on a new program, um, we want to offer an alternative path to the PCR EPD process, we'd like to work with uh, a program operator who does certify and verify uh, LCAs and reports. And certainly want to reinforce that um, NSF is available to always verify LCAs and certainly to certify transparency reports and also to work with you on developing uh, PCRs and EPDs 
that's the path that you uh, continue to choose. So digging into uh, what is a transparency report, because that, that's the point, is to create the report, which is why we came to market with that deliverable first. The process is really just the process to uh, get to this uh, deliverable. Uh, we did a pretty extensive uh, research project last summer looking at a broad range of, of EPDs, um, analyzing the content in those EPDs, uh, the length, literally the number of pages. Uh, we looked at different product categories from different manufacturers in different geographic regions and realized that we would be able to uh, produce a very useful report in three pages. Uh, we know people don't really like to read, uh, but all the content required in an EPD actually can be delivered in three pages. Uh, it, again, it starts with an ISO 14044 compliant LCA. We report all 10 Tracy impact categories always, and we have added our single figure scores in addition to help make the life cycle stage results understandable uh, to non-LCA specialists. Again, uh, we've combined all the functional information and all the environmental performance information in one place so that people looking to make a purchase decision can work with one uh, essentially piece of product literature. And ultimately, and I'll show you how this works, uh, a manufacturer can get started where they are and choose from three different verification levels based on what's important to the manufacturer and what they believe is important to their customers. It can be self-declared, uh, LCA, self-declared report, the verified LCA and self-declared report, so you can get a verified LCA and a certified report. And again, importantly, all your product information and data is in the cloud and not encoded in, in PDFs. Here's the three pages, and we're actually going to take a look at a real uh, transparency report. Uh, on the front page, we have the performance dashboard, which has all the information somebody's going to need to make a decision, the environmental and the functional information. If they want to dig into the LCA results, that's on the second page. And very importantly, this is where we get into the big differentiation, we're not just delivering LCA results, we're delivering the LCA results in a way that's understandable as well as the interpretation of what those results mean. And further, not only what do the results mean, but the manufacturer gets to start telling their stories about what they've implemented in their organization to improve the environmental performance of their products, which they can start here on page two and continue on page three and really get into some detail about what they're doing in each stage of the product's life cycle um, that is substantively, sub substantively contributing to improving the environmental performance of their products. I'm showing you the structure of this page because this page gets reused, this format. Uh, You'll see in the HPD results and interpretation page, we reuse this format, as well as in our uh, learn more about LCA, our single score LCA results and what they mean. And so the structure of this page uh, is consistent. In the left column, is the report scope, attributes, and summary. On the right side is the interpretation and explanation of what those things mean. In this zone is the detailed data and results of the LCA. And down towards the bottom uh, is the reference section, links to those references and or background reports and rating system results. And here is a close-up of the footer. Uh, as I was explaining before, uh, on every page it's very clear, um, verification and certification levels of the report, the scope of the LCA, um, and very clear contact information and other links that uh, were destinations the manufacturer would like somebody to visit 
but making it very easy for uh, someone interested in that product to uh, contact the manufacturer. Let's go to uh, a quick demo. Uh, here we are in the uh, Steel Mines Toto's Manufacturer Showroom, uh, where as the manufacturer adds more products, uh, all of their products linked from their own showroom, and they can have uh, actually as much content as they like here on the showroom page to introduce uh, their environmental stories or their commitment to transparency. We're going to drill here into the Eco Drake report. Um, again, here's the performance dashboard. Uh, the manufacturer can link to wherever else they would like to uh, send a visitor. Here's uh, to more specific uh, features and descriptions and specifications of the product. Uh, all of these link to other pages um, in their website or the manufacturer can choose to drive people to those uh, websites of the labels, the uh, regulations, certifications. Again, this will take people to a uh, contact page uh, anywhere that the manufacturer would like to send. Uh, someone looking to contact them. Uh, and here in the uh, environmental performance side of the dashboard, uh, you can learn more about our single score results. And again, here's that format that I had explained earlier. On the left-hand side is all the information about how the results are calculated and uh, open and close these different sections and ultimately learn about, uh, again, those calculations. And on the right-hand side is the interpretation. What does it mean? Um, so, again, it's all about the technical explanation, understandable, credible, but then what does it mean at the end of the day? It's not simply about uh, just presenting the data. I can click on the second page, and here I am uh, now looking at the scope and summary uh, as required uh, in the EPD. You can see we've introduced our single figure scores so that people can really see very easily where the impacts are occurring by life cycle stage. Again, the interpretation what does it mean? You know, what's causing the impact? The sensitivity analysis. And here the manufacturer can begin to talk about the programs that they've put in place. Here in the LCA results, you can see the life cycle stages that were included in the LCA and the information modules the manufacturer can illustrate those stages with their own images if they like. Again, here are single figure scores with excerpts from the interpretation to make it uh, very understandable what's causing the greatest impacts, greater than 20% of the impacts in each of those life cycle stages. And now uh, we can look at the full LCA results. Uh, and in fact, again, because it is online, you can take advantage of all the capabilities that an online document has to offer and to help people understand you know, what is this data that's being presented to them? What does it mean? And why do we even care um, about each of these impact categories. When you get to the bottom, uh, you can see the value uh, in these respective rating systems. Again, self-declared, self-declared. In uh, Weed D4, has no product credit. Uh, a verified LTA and a self-declared report uh, actually gets you um, a quarter product credit. Right, it's a typo, we have to change that. And um, a verified and certified report uh, should ultimately earn uh, the specifier a full product credit. And we're in the process of um, review 
uh, with the USGBC. Uh, here in the reference section, you can request the background report, you can link to learn more about the framework, and ultimately the product group definition that was used to do the LCA. And uh, page three, uh, which is optional, so in the transparency report, to meet the disclosure and reporting requirements, you must have page one and page two, uh, but like an EPD where product information is optional, this page is optional, and again, the manufacturer can uh, share as much information as they like about what they're doing in each stage of the product life cycle uh, to improve the performance of the product um, or not. I'm going to jump back to the uh, presentation. Again, the transparency report program delivers more than just a report. Uh, your data gets delivered to you in a sustainable mind account, uh, turned into single figure scores, and we even start to model the product for you uh, so that you can see how to get started. And certainly, training and additional subscriptions and additional data is available to you as a service. You can see here's the data selector, here's the private data set. You can keep your data private or it can be added to the public data set. And we'll talk more about that um, in a later webcast. So getting into a little bit of the um, uh, technical aspect of the program, um, we introduced the Transparency Report Framework, which is based on EN 15804 and is in compliance with 14040 and 14044 and 14025. Now, the framework uh, is really in two parts, part A, part B, and is supported by a governance document and delivers the transparency report. Now, some of you uh, are probably wondering, well, if it uh, is based on uh, these standards and guidelines and is in compliance uh, with 14025, why are we not calling this a PCR and EPD process? Um, and very simply, um, PCR and EPD are, are described terms. Uh, the transparency report framework uh, is a re-engineered process. And because of that, we decided to use terminology that is specific to uh, this process while making sure that people uh, understand that uh, the process is ISO 14025 uh, compliant and even in certain instances uh, exceeds the requirements. Again, next week's webcast will be a technical presentation given by our technical team to dig into um, those specific comparisons. The quick overview, though, is that uh, uh, those of you familiar with some of the work happening in, in Europe uh, to streamline the PCR process there. Uh, similarly, our transparency report framework is based on a two-part process, uh, where our part A um, is the LCA calculation rule and background report requirements document. Uh, again, uh, the combination of the uh, standards uh, helps define uh, how the LCA must be done and then how that story will be told. For those of you not familiar with EN 15804, uh, it's a European standard developed by the European Committee for Standards. Uh, it is specific to building products. It includes all the rules that would apply to building materials and products. In Europe, all the national program operators must follow 15804, but can issue additional rules um, as long as they, they don't conflict. Now, how we're using uh, 15804 in creating our part A, again, is to describe how any LCA will get done to create a transparency report, but for any product in any industry, and we are uh, 
regionalizing it for North America, not only by uh, using uh, the Tracy impact assessment method, but by integrating other North American uh, standards and, and guidelines uh, for doing LCA. But again, the goal is to uh, create a standardized framework that provides the same platform for creating uh, a core EPD or a core transparency report, uh, requiring very few additional rules. Our part B, which we call a product group definition or PGD, um, is intended to be as simple and streamlined as possible. So it starts with the definition of a product group. So a product group uh, it describes products that deliver the same functional performance or deliver or compete uh, for the same uh, application or, or purpose. Having a very, very simple standardized description of a product group then allows manufacturers to demonstrate their own particular competitive advantage and, and differentiation. So a product group definition, or PGD, consists of three sections. Um, first, the functional performance, so the performance uh, uh, that uh, is how an industry measures uh, the service that that product delivers. So here, for example, in our value for insulation. The next section is the functional unit. And the third section, then, is any additional rules that are needed to help compare products within the group. Um, the third component of the framework is the governance document that describes um, how the framework will be administrated. Uh, it's overseen by a technical advisory board, a program coordinator, and ultimately uh, the TAB members are uh, invited members from uh, industry or LCA experts from manufacturing companies uh, and from uh, program operators. So how does someone or a group of folks get started creating a product group definition? Um, who and how? So uh, a product group definition can get started by a single manufacturer, a group of manufacturers, or even an industry association. Um, getting started, uh, that single manufacturer or group or industry association uh, literally just fills out uh, the PGD form. It gets submitted to uh, the Technical Advisory Board for review for completeness and rigor. Uh, if it's not uh, ready for public comment, it goes back with comments to the initiator. If it is ready for public comment, um, then it gets posted uh, to our PGD and review site, which I'm going to show you just in a minute. Uh, it's available for four weeks for public comment. Those comments are then taken, reviewed by the tab, and determined uh, how to be integrated and then given back uh, to the initiator for um, approval to move forward with uh, their respective LCAs. Now, uh, as I mentioned, a single manufacturer can get started, a group of manufacturers, or even an industry association who is looking to fill out uh, the, the breadth of uh, product group definitions, or PCRs, to help the manufacturers in their industry get started with transparency. They've already defined how products get grouped in their industry, and that makes it very easy for them to get started. The group, those groups are already named. The functional performance is already identified. Uh, the standards and regulations uh, are already well documented. This can easily be kicked off and then turned over to folks in the industry to complete. The PGD request form is a single page. Uh, I'll show it to you in a minute. Uh, this is a uh, draft PGD or the example PGD, which is 
now up for public comment, but it's included in the draft uh, as an example in, in Part B. You can see when it's complete, it's still a single but kind of long page, if you will. Um, manufacturers can get started if they have an existing LCA and they start a new product group definition or if they don't yet have an LCA and they need to get started. Now, the process that we've implemented is all about continuous improvement. It's about being able to get started, get going, but not to the extent that it limits uh, manufacturers from uh, getting going and being efficient, getting to their transparency reports, but also to enable kind of continuous improvement and continuous learning. So subsequent to a product group definition uh, being published, a manufacturer shows up to use that PGD and decides that there needs to be a change or perhaps an additional rule uh, for comparability. The same process gets uh, uh, reiterated. The PGD gets submitted to the tab. The tab reviews it. It gets posted for public comment. Comments get given back to the initiator. Whether that rule or the change gets made, gets posted, and then the LCA and the initiator gets to move forward. Anyone who has produced the transparency report to the existing PGD will then simply update it when it's time for them uh, to update their PGD or their transparency report. Another quick demo, um, here's the PGD and review page. We really encourage all of you on this webcast uh, to take some time to go visit uh, the PGD in review page. It's inside the transparency report program section on the website and there's a link to it in every uh, sidebar on the page. You can see the three PGDs that are available right now uh, are plumbing products, commercial faucets, flush valves, and residential toilets. Uh, you can click on the uh, PDF the mine uh, downloaded in my browser, review that, and then click on the comment form and it will take you to our online comment collection form where you can uh, click through, uh, provide as much free text commentary uh, as you like to that PGD. Tell us who you are um, and you're done. The comment period for these three PGDs extends through June 30th and we again really encourage you to uh, visit this page, review the PGD. Uh, we welcome any and all comments. Uh, we invite you to contact us and uh, we also invite you to uh, download your own Part B, review the product group definition, the example, and uh, get started on your own PGD for your products uh, in your industry. Getting ready to um, wrap up on what I've shared with you today, getting uh, kind of a finer point on the, um, the benefits that we have heard pretty, uh, pretty consistently from the folks that we've worked with for the last year and a half. Uh, the process benefits are, are not insubstantial. Uh, we have created a framework that will deliver enhanced consistency because we're using a standard framework. We're not relying on, on uh, PCR working groups to develop an entire PCR uh, every time a new PCR gets started, uh, which dramatically improves uh, the time it takes to get to uh, a product group definition. Uh, again, they're modular and additive. They can be improved over time. And ultimately, the cost of creating a product group definition 
is is quite low. And uh, again, uh, we we invite a single manufacturer or a group of manufacturers to get started uh, creating a product with definition. No matter the number of organizations involved, uh, it costs ten thousand dollars from start to finish, and uh, that cost can be shared between groups. It can be borne by a single group. Uh, again, um, we really want to make it easy to get started uh, and, and affordable. Um, the people benefits, we also have heard from stakeholders that we've worked with are not uh, insubstantial. Manufacturing will save time. The entire process costs less. You get better results. Industry associations can play an appropriate role uh, in terms of guidance. LCA service providers have a new tool they can deliver when they deliver LCAs. And decision makers who are trying to understand and really specify uh, products that are truly greener have an easier time understanding uh, the relative environmental performance of the particular products and ultimately rewarding manufacturers who are making greener products and making that information understandable. And it benefits the USGBC uh, who has put a stake in the ground and I think have been um, you know, very, very brave to uh, make product transparency top of mind. Uh, in the building products industry. And this should prove to uh, help create more transparent LCA results faster, to award more product manufacturers, to help more decision makers build truly greener buildings. And as you can see, in a quick preview, as HPDs have become uh, increasingly important and top of mind, again, so that manufacturers and people making decisions don't have to look across multiple pieces of product literature. And again, trying to make that information, that important information, understandable. We will be integrating them into uh, transparency reports as an optional tab. We also will be looking to um, adopt any publicly available database and data sets as they become available to continue to enhance consistency. And certainly, uh, we'll be working cooperatively with all American program operators to achieve harmonization as well as um, mutual recognition agreements. Again, a sneak preview of the HPD overview and interpretation. When asked, when we ask architects and specifiers, what do you want to learn from an HPD? There were four questions that repeatedly came up. Are there hazardous ingredients in the product? If yes, how bad are they? What are the risks of exposure? And then what's the company doing about improving uh, the environmental performance of its products? So our HPD overview uh, will be available starting next month as uh, another tab in the second page. So when there's that tab gets added, uh, you'll be able to toggle between the LCA results and interpretation and the HPD results and interpretation. And again, uh, lots of terms that need to be defined. All of those definitions are available right here on the page. Certainly, we'll be able to link to the full HPD no matter where that lives. Um, and you're going to be, I think, pretty excited to hear in the next few weeks about the interpretation uh, and validation options that, um, that we have in development. So, to close, again, we've been talking with so many uh, stakeholders in the process, um, and I think it's um, become fairly evident to a lot of folks that manufacturers um, have been incentivized uh, by LEED to get started being transparent. Um, so 
so that they can check that box. Um, but we all know that the presence of an EPD or an HPD is not an indication of a greener product. And you know, lots, lots of folks are checking the box and creating um, ports uh, that isn't going to satisfy the real transparency demand. But the real demand uh, is going to require that manufacturers make that information uh, understandable and meaningful and, and consistent. Um, you know, we believe that uh, it isn't enough just to report and benchmark uh, a manufacturer's existing products. Uh, what needs to happen is manufacturers need to learn where uh, the impacts are occurring in the life cycle of their products and actually make decisions that improve that performance uh, so that they can report and be competitive in the marketplace. And so our program is about helping manufacturers do both. And at the end of the day, just help them make things better. So uh, it's all about making greener product decisions, creating a continuous improvement loop. Next week's webcast uh, will be at a different time, still on Tuesday, but at 11 a.m., where we'll deliver the technical presentation comparing the single mesh transparency report program to uh, ISO 14025. Again, this will be delivered by uh, Yup and Naji. You can always email tab at sustainableminds.com. Those emails go to Yup and Naji and a few other folks. Um, Happy to uh, do one-on-one, -on -one, uh, share the information with people. We uh, want to be as transparent as the program that we are uh, bringing to market. And um, given that we are at the top of the hour, I uh, want to thank you for spending your time. And uh, for those of you, pretty much everyone, um, stayed for the duration. Uh, again, you can email the tab, you can email sales, you can call us. Uh, we will follow up with you. And for those of you um, who are going to hang on for just a little bit, uh, there are a couple questions that uh, as I'm scrolling through, uh, Pretty much, I've touched on some of these questions, and then some of them uh, people take offline and follow up with you directly. Um, again, uh, thank you for coming, and we look forward to speaking with you directly or seeing you on subsequent webcasts. So have a great day. Thank you.